Hey guys, Speed here, and today I am bringing you guys a video that I probably shouldn't be bringing. I'm doing something that I probably should not be doing, which is exposing the community to ideas that are most likely harmful for the solo queue environment. But I'm doing it anyway because I'm very passionate about this topic, and this topic is a tier list of cores that can be played as supports. Now, this is something that is particularly valuable in Captain's mode as it allows you to trick people by picking cores and then shifting them to the support role. However, it can be also useful in solo queue for the same reason. There are a few heroes in here that I think are particularly good in solo queue for specific reasons, and I'll be covering that so you can sneak in free wins with a weird support hero that is usually a core. Before we jump into the video, I want to let you guys know that you can check out guides just like this one made by top tier pros over at GameLoop.com. We have thousands of guides that can teach you the game of Dota 2 in depth and help you gain MMR much quicker than you usually would. Now let's jump into it. Alright, starting off at number 10, we have Invoker. So Invoker was recently picked by OG, and I'm kidding, please don't run on Invoker as support. Uh, I would definitely not go this far. So yeah, let's get into the real number 10 hero, which is Jug. And this is not a joke, even though it might sound like just as much of a joke as Invoker did. I actually think Jug has a lot of value in terms of a tri lane support. And it might sound stupid, really, but my reasoning for it is that a lot of tri lanes nowadays run a position 4 or a position 5 that has a stun. And I actually think Jug can be ran in the position 5 or position 4 role. And the reason is that you're playing the hero for the value in level 1 spin and level 1 healing ward. The value in level 1 spin gives you kill potential on 95% of the hero dota pool at level 1, which is super valuable in the tri lane setting. In addition, healing ward is easily one of the best spells in tri lanes. You simply give all of your laning partners an insane amount of HP regen and it can help you sustain through the laning stage, something else almost no other hero can do. So I think Jug has quite a niche there and um, definitely something I would recommend you try out in unranked first with your friends. Uh, before doing <laughs> rank, it's because I can't guarantee that this is uh, successful, but in theory crafting, it definitely has potential. Alright, let's get into number 9, and this one is not nearly as crazy as Jug. In fact, it was actually quite popular a while ago, but I wanted to bring it up again, and that is Weaver. So, Weaver as a core is picked when the enemy team has heroes that fall victim to minus armor, or continuous minus armor, or have heroes that lack stuns or silences, simply because you can run away from slows. So Weaver as a support is great in the same sense where he can annoy backline supports that cannot deal with him. In addition, he has one of the best ags in the game, which allows you to send one of your teammates back in time, removing all the damage they've taken as if they had a time lapse for themselves. So this is particularly useful against cores such as Jug because it entirely negates Omni Slash, it's really good against heroes like Luna because it can negate all of something like Eclipse. And overall, just any hero that has a spell that is very one and done, Support Weaver can be fantastic against. Also, as I mentioned previously, just want to reiterate it, it is great against supports that cannot deal with him or catch him in Sakuchi. Moving on to number 8, we have Beastmaster. Now this one is probably one of my favorites on the list. I'm not putting it too high up because I think it actually has some of a skill cap to make it work specifically as a position 4. However, if you are very comfortable on the hero and are able to maximize its utility, it has great value as a support because simply levels on the hero make it super, super strong. In addition, it is very effective in tri lanes. It has some of the best base stats. It can buy a stout shield, has around 70 damage at level 1, and can trade with almost any hero in Dota. In addition, Inner Beast is great in tri lanes as well. It gives all of your teammates plus attack speed, which makes trading great. In addition, it pushes in the creep wave, which typically might be a problem if you are trying to hold lane equilibrium, but in tri lanes, it's not a big deal because then you'll have a creep advantage, making trading even more effective. Finally, what I'd like to say about Beastmaster last is that he has some of the best jungling in the game. So in solo queue, often cores will just be jungling the entire game. Uh, it's impossible to deny this. People just want to farm. So Beastmaster, as a support is great at farming, he's great at doing that. He can also push out dangerous lanes that your cores don't want to. He can scout with the Hawk and then use boars to safely farm. It's really great for solo queue. Next up at number 7, we have Chaos Knight. 
Now, Chaos Knight has recently become one of the most popular cores in Dota, especially at the high tier levels, simply for his ability to sustain the lane with his crit and become a menace in the mid to late game, as he will most likely have a good landing stage. This landing stage, as a support, can often be reciprocated in a few ways because your crit is still just as good at level 1 as a support, and you have a ton of utility. At maxed out, your slow is a 40% slow on a 5 second cooldown. That is absolutely incredible, uh, as long as you can stay alive. So if you're building stat items, I would definitely try to recommend playing this hero as a 4, because you can scale quite nicely if you're able to avoid purchasing these support items, but you have a slow and a stun which even if you are a 5 is still very useful. Overall, if you can buy stats and get levels on this hero, you will have impact in fights and actually be able to one-shot supports. It's quite crazy. If you pick up a medallion and have treads, you can easily tear apart supports in the mid and late game. Next up, we have a very fun support, which is Pangolier. Now, this hero is also a very fun core, but the reason I want to bring it up as a support is it does very well with the levels, right? It's a hero that naturally doesn't necessarily need items to have impact. However, position 4, if you are a greedy position 4 player, even position 5 player, you can get farm, you can get a javelin, and even if you don't have a javelin, your ultimate will always have value. It's one of the highest potential value spells in Dota 2. Obviously, it's hit or miss. Quite literally, it's hit or miss. So, if you get good at the hero, it can be very, very nice as a niche pick as you can bait the enemy team to maybe pick something weird like a Bloodseeker, which isn't necessarily a good Dota hero, but they might think it's a Pangolier counter. I've actually seen this in my pubs, and for that, I think the hero definitely has a nice niche if you have strong lanes. That's where I would say you need to be careful. This hero provides very, very little in the laning stage, so if you can pair it up with something maybe like an Enigma, who doesn't really care about pressuring the lane, but rather wants to drag it back, then you can probably get away with it. But in general, I would want to pick this if my lanes are weak. Next up, I think, is a hero that is underrated as a support, and in my opinion, I understand why, but I think it definitely has a nice niche that people aren't looking into, and that hero is Pugna. So Pugna as a support is nice in my opinion, because it is so flexible when drafting, right? This is particularly useful in captain's mode, simply because if you first phase this hero, if you can run it as a support, you can run it as a support, 5 or 4, you can run it as a 3, and you can run it as a mid. So, you have a ton of potential with this hero, right? In terms of being able to flex it. So if you don't think it's a good core, or they counterpick it, throw it to the support role. As a support, it also has a ton of value, right? Decrep is one of the highest potential value spells, similar to Pangolier ult. It has a ton of value, no matter what level it is, right? It can amp magical damage, or completely negate physical damage. In addition, Netherward takes nothing, right? You just have to put it down. You don't have to be alive. You don't have to position well. You just throw it down, and against certain heroes, it's gonna destroy them. And finally, your Nether Blast is just great for zoning, right? It's only 85 mana level 1, super spammable with its low cooldown, and is great at taking towers so you can pressure the map, something people usually never do in solo queue. Next up at number 4, we have one of my personal favorites, and one I ran before and ran with my friend recently, which is Tidehunter support. Tidehunter is a great support in my opinion, simply because Gush is an incredible spell, super, super undervalued at level 1. It is a 40% slow that also does a ton of damage and reduces armor. There is not a lot of spells that do all three things in Dota, and Gush happens to be one of them. In addition with the buffs to Anger Smash, you pump out an insane amount of damage at level 2, especially at level 3. So, saying that, you're also impossible to zone out, right? You can buy a stout shield, because with this Gush and Anchor Smash build, you will be skipping Kraken Shell, which allows you to buy a stout shield and get full value from it. Because of this, when paired with a hero such as Pugna, or any ranged hero that does a ton of damage, maybe like Enigma, or Enchantress, anything, you can constantly pump out damage and out-sustain the enemy making it one of my favorite supports, as it also can safely split push lanes and provide incredible team fight. Next up at number 3, we have Ursa. Now, Ursa is actually becoming quite popular as a support and has been a support in the past, and for good reason, right? The hero received an insane movement speed buff, it runs faster than nearly every single hero in Dota right now, and trades extremely effectively due to its high armor and the value in fury swipes in the early game. And as a result, Similar to Pugna, it can be played as many different roles, which allows it to be a great flex pick. 
You can even flex pick and solo queue with your uh, teammates and keep them happy, right? You can pick Ursa early, mark the safe lane, and be like, alright guys, if you're fighting over safe lane and you need to get what you want, like you always do, just give it to them, right? And you can play a support role, 5 or 4, it doesn't matter, just try to win the lane. In addition, the hero allows you to have Roche potential even as a support. This is something that almost no other support gives you, right? There are a few exceptions, but Ursa is definitely an interesting one because with Vlad's or a teammate's Vlad's, you can almost do it alone. It's quite incredible for uh, a support and definitely a nice niche that Ursa provides in the support role. Next up at number two, we have a personal favorite of mine. I feel like I've been saying this a lot, but this is by far my number one core that I like to play as a support, and that is Bat Rider. I have a very fond memory myself. It was quite a while back. I was around 5k MMR, maybe 5.5k MMR, playing in an open qualifier, made it to close qualifiers when uh, there wasn't too many good teams at the time, managed to sneak in and played against a CCNC stack, I believe it was uh, Optic, when they had Misery quite a while ago. Definitely a different iteration of the team. And I was able to solo kill CCNC as a support bat rider. Very fond memory for me, so it's definitely a reason why it's higher up on the list, but there are a few other reasons which I will now go over. Alright, sorry for my rant, but the main reason bat rider is such a good support is because his laning stage is incredible. Sticky Napalm and Firefly are near impossible to trade with for a lot of heroes. If they lack the ability to disengage or purge your Sticky Napalm stacks, you can zone out almost any hero in Dota, including the very tanky ones. In addition, you're great at catching back up, right? You can stack neutral camps and then farm them, which is great in the solo queue environment. It's even great in competitive, but particularly in solo queue when everyone just wants to farm. And you are great at solo killing enemy heroes, I promise you. If you practice this hero enough and learn its limitations, you can get to the point where you're solo killing cores. I have a memory in my mind when I was against an alchemist, and I was able to solo kill a Radiance alchemist simply because I got 7 stacks of sticky napalm and he completely disregarded me. Of course this was previous to when chemical rage purges, so it wouldn't probably happen in this patch, but the point is, if you learn your limits, you can make pretty insane plays. In addition, finally off, you have blink dagger on battle rider which just gives you a really nice initiation tool to catch pesky heroes that often hide in backlines. And finally, we have at number one, a very, very good core that I never thought would become a support, but has recently become very popular as so, which is Luna. Lunar Blessing has quickly risen to be one of the most respected spells in all of Dota, simply because it's potential at all stages of the game. At level one, it makes strength heroes have 120 more HP. Pretty insane. In addition, it makes all the heroes in your lane do 6 more damage and be a lot more threatening. As a core, it's very scary for the same reasons, but as a support, you don't have to take farm. Lucent Beam is still a great nuke. Eclipse is a great, amazing teamfight spell, and you have a pretty good laning stage. This hero, particular in tri lanes, is, as I talked about, one of the best heroes. Paired with a stun, it's near impossible to trade it feels, simply because of the raw stats that she gives you. When maxed out, Lunar Blessing also gives you 800 night vision. This is amazing for making ganks in the nighttime. You can simply see further than everyone else unless they have like a night stalker. So it's just great utility that almost no other hero provides. In addition, at level 10 and 15, you have talents that heavily buff your Lucent Beam. So it's great for canceling blank daggers or just annoying units that can't really deal with magical damage throughout the game. And finally, a great thing about Luna as a support is that she is incredibly effective both in the 5 and 4 role. No matter what, with level 4 Lunar Blessing, you're going to provide 24 of the primary attribute to your team. And if you're a 4, you can build a Vlad's, you can build an Ag's, but as a 5, it doesn't matter. You're still going to provide the value of Eclipse and Lunar Blessing, which is why this hero is my number one core that can be played as a support. Alright, thank you guys for watching this video. Before I end it off, I just want to let you know that you can check out other wacky videos that teach you about niche strategies like this one on GameLeap.com, where I post videos and different guides quite often. If you learned anything about Dota at all, or found any of these strategies very interesting, please do like and subscribe and comment if you think I forgot any core that can be played as a support that maybe you do in your solo queue to win MMR. Alright, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.